Hello and welcome to my tube uh, live show. God bless everyone who just joined in. Jesus is a Lord and Islam is false. <clears throat> Thank you for watching. Uh, please tell me if you can hear me. Give me a one in the live chat if you can hear me, please, so we can start this live show. This is a test. This is a test. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the conf confirmation. Thank you. Guys, today we wanted to have a nice teaching about the lies and deception of Muhammad and Islam. And we will also um, have the opportunity to uh, go through some Islamic sources and see what kind of inhumane, disgusting teaching Muhammad taught in Islam and also, like I said, expose his lies as a fake prophet. Last but not least, we will um, have again a nice Q&A session like the last time with our guest in the live chat. In other words, you can go ahead and ask me some questions, either about Islam or the mentioned topics and I will like always try to answer as fair as I can but before we start I want to ask everybody to pray with me to guide us through this live show let's pray in the name of Jesus Christ dear Lord thank you for your grace thank you for your grace because we are saved by your grace thank you for your greatness god and thank you for our daily bread thank you lord that you are so mighty and give me peace when i'm weak and in need of comfort please give me the strength and wisdom today and always to overcome lies and deception help me not to lean on my own understanding lord but in everything acknowledge you so that you can direct my words, thoughts, and actions. Lord, the devil is using deception. He is using taqiyya. And we know he desires to keep us from the truth, Lord. Lord, please don't allow him to win. Give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, deception, and doubt. Please, Lord, help us honor you in all our ways. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Guys, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and smash that like button. Let us start and expose the lies of Muhammad and Islam. I was going through some uh, tweet messages uh, today and I found a tweet uh, from uh, brother Rashid his Twitter account and and I saw this message uh, in Arabic maybe if you can see the screen uh, here there's an ex-Muslim called Ali Muhammad who tweeted to Rashid, brother Rashid his uh, Twitter message and uh, his message let me translate the Arabic He's saying that uh, he told his mother, he told his mother that he basically left Islam and when she goes to Jannah, clearly his mother is a still a Muslim, when she goes to Jannah, the Islamic brothel of Allah, she will laugh at, his, her, at her own son, this Ali Muhammad who left Islam, she will laugh at her own son because she is a Muslim in Jannah laughing at the kuffar who are burning in hellfire. And when he told her that, she got shocked because she didn't know that it's in the Quran. He told her that this is in the Quran and she was shocked. And it says here, it's in the Quran and she's still shocked. Right? Mazduma. She is Mazduma. She's shocked that she didn't know about her, this, that her son, when he goes to hellfire, because you know, Muslims say 
uh, Christians will go to hellfire. She, did, she doesn't know she became sad, you know? And it's actually in the Quran. Let me show you guys. If we go to the Quran, we can find this in chapter 83, ayah 34. Look how disgusting it is. Read with me. But this day, the day of resurrection, those who will believe, the Muslims in this case, those who will believe, will laugh at the disbelievers. So this gentleman was correct. His own mother will laugh at him when he's according to the Quran, will be burned for eternity in hellfire because he did not stay in Islam. He left Islam and he accepted Jesus Christ. You know? So this is the disgusting teaching. Muslims in the sex brothel of Jannah laughing from the seven heavens of the Jannah laughing at disbelievers. What kind of sick religion, sick sex cult this Islam is? Imagine you're sitting in the sex Jannah enjoying the virgins and the women can watch their men having sexual intercourse with huris and when it's their turn they can be deflowered by their men watching their own men having sex intercourse with huris right they are so wide that you can see their bones basically what a disgusting call that an, a mother will laugh at her own son because he is out of Islam burning in hellfire this is the nice and fantastic teaching of the Quran guys I uh, really want to uh, also tell you that I got an email from YouTube that I finally uh, can be monetized so if you can donate please feel free and do so we always need your support through Patreon and if you can uh, donate to help us out, support our work, thank you for your donations. Thank you for becoming a patron on my Patreon account. If we go to a hadith, we will see that according to the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 50, and 80, 58, 50, 80, you can read, narrated bin Abdullah, when I got married, Allah's messenger said to me, what type of lady have you married? And the Sahabi replies, I have married a matron. He said, why don't you have a liking for the virgins and the fondling them? So Muhammad is saying to the Sahabi, to his companion, why, why are you doing this, man? Why didn't you marry a virgin, a young girl, so you can fondle her? You know, fondling guys in Arabic, this is not the tri right translation. Fondling guys means, uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, use bad language. You know, the filthy language of Muhammad and Islam. But basically what Muhammad is saying, why don't you uh, marry a virgin little girl and put your male member between her legs and do tiring? Tying, right? Her. Look this disgust, this disgusting advice of Muhammad. Instead of the Prophet of Islam saying, Oh, you've done a good job, you know. You married an uh, older lady. Uh, good for you. Instead, he's giving the advice. Why? I mean, why did you not marry a younger girl? Disgusting, man. This is a Prophet of God, guys? Muslims, is this a Prophet of God? Giving such a disgusting advice? Right? Tighting young girls. And then Jabir also said, Allah's messenger just said, Why didn't you marry a young girl so that you might play with her and, see, and she with you? Playing with young girls. In this case, you know, tighting or tying. I, sorry, guys, my English is not my first language. I think it's tying, right? So, as you see, this is from Sahih al Bukhari, Sahih hadith. Sahih al-Bukhari. So Muslims can't say this is a weak 
hadith. This is the filthy, disgusting teaching of the Prophet of Islam. And I also found a <clears throat> tafsir for the Quran by Ibn Kathir. This is Ibn Kathir translation for the Quran. Muslims in a hadith, he says to his Sahaba, if you go attack people and you take their women and children, you take their women as sex slaves, don't cut down the trees. You know, Muslims have often in our debates mentioned this. Muhammad was such a great guy. He said, do not cut off trees. He loves nature and whatnot. But here we are going to show you, according to the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, Muhammad actually commanded to cut down and burn trees. Read with me. What you were cut down of Delina or left them standing on their stems, it was by leave of Allah. Imam Ahmad recorded that Ibn Umar said that the Messenger of Allah ordered that the date trees of Bani Nadir be cut down and burned. Maybe uh, the admins can give the links inside the live chat. Let me try and copy it. Let's see if it's going to work, guys. Bear with me. This is the link for this tafsir. So here, Muhammad is contradicting his own teaching. Right? Can you be a prophet of God and contradict yourself as a prophet? No, you cannot. So this is clear evidence that Muhammad is a fake prophet. And remember, when Muhammad was in Khaybar and he was poisoned by a Jewish woman. Later he says to Aisha, I feel as if, no, not as if, because that's a false translation. I almost fall, fell for that taqiyah. The Arabic says, I feel that my aorta is being cut off. If you go to the hadith, you see a false translation saying as if. The Arabic doesn't say as if. It says, Oh Aisha, I feel that my aorta is being cut off of that poison I ate in Khaybar. The poison is meat. And in the Quran, if you go to the Quran, you will see that Allah says, anyone who, any prophet who tells lies, who is lying on my behalf, we will seize him by the right hand in the Quran. And we will make sure to cut off his aorta. So here, the killer of Muhammad is no one else than Allah. Allah is the one who killed the Prophet of Islam because Muhammad was a disgusting fake prophet. I also want to show you that Muhammad was nothing but a bad copy paste machine. He heard stories, legend stories from many sources, many books that used to circle around the Arabic Peninsula and the Mediterranean Sea. Don't forget that Muhammad, when he was married to Khadija, he came across a lot of stories, a lot of apocrypha stories, Christian stories that are not in the Bible, that have been not put as canon in the Bible. For example, the Gospel Pseudo Matthew, the Gospel of Pseudo Matthew, which is not a biblical divine story that we added to our Holy Bible. Muhammad had, as a merchant working under Khadija, had access to these writings, right? And they used to circle around in Aramaic. And we know that Waraka ibn Nufal, the cousin of Khadija, his first wife, he could translate from the Aramaic to Arabic. So Muhammad was getting help from Waraq ibn Nufal, getting access to these stories, as you see in front of you, where Mary is shaking the palm tree to get dates. And this story is found in the Quran. It's not a divine inspired story. So Muhammad made it look as it is divine. And we can find it back 
in the Quran. Muhammad was nothing but a copy paste machine. As you see here. Muhammad got that from the Gospel of Pseudo Matthew. And as you hear, see here, it says, the Gospel of Pseudo Matthew is a part of the New Testament Apocrypha and sometimes goes by the name of the infancy Gospel of Matthew. But the actual name of the text in antiquity was the book about the origin of the Blessed Mary and the childhood of the Savior. So this is nothing but an Apocrypha. What is it doing in the Quran, guys? Here you can see the ayah from the Quran where Mary is shaking the palm tree. This is Surah Maryam, chapter 19, ayah 25. Look what it says. And shake toward you the tr trunk of the palm tree. It will drop upon you ripe, fresh dates. Hey, this sounds familiar, doesn't it? So as you see, Muslims and non-Muslims who are watching, you see that Muhammad actually stole this story from the Gospel of Psyru Matthew, which is an apocrypha. You see that, guys? How she's shaking the palm tree. And I mean, how can a, let's say she is five feet tall, guys. How can a five feet tall Mary shake a tree? You need 40 men, maybe 100 men to shake a palm tree to get the dates falling of it. I think this Maryam, this Islamic Maryam, because we don't believe this is the same uh, Mary, because the Quran describes her as the sister of Aaron and Moses, bint Amran, the sister of Aaron and Moses, which there is at least a 1200 year difference in story. Guys, don't call me. I hear someone is calling me. Don't call me yet. You can call me later when I give the opportunity to do a nice Q&A session, guys. Let me finish my teaching, then, uh, then you can call me. Please wait, okay? Hold your horses. So as you see in front of you guys, Muhammad was nothing but a copy machine. Faris, don't call me. I will block you if you call me now, okay? Don't call me yet. So as you see, guys, Muhammad was nothing but a stealer of stories that used to circle around the Mediterranean Sea that Muhammad had access to. All man-made stories. Um, my Skype, guys, is the Arab Christian without separation. The Arab Christian. Maybe the admins can give it in the text. The Arab Christian. Let us go to the Hadith, guys. Let's see what Sunan Abi Daud says. Uh, this is another teaching to the Muslims that really is disgusting and it amazes me. This is the Hadith, Sunan Abi Daud, Hadith number 1531, 1531. That Muslims actually follow this disgusting teaching of Muhammad. And look what it says. Among the most excellent of your days is Friday. So invoke many blessings on me on that day. Here, Muhammad is asking to pray on him, right? So Allah and the angels pray on Muhammad. So when Allah prays, to who does Allah pray actually? Allah wal malaika yusalluna ala nabi. So do, to who Allah is praying, we're still waiting after 1400 years for a Muslim to answer our question. When Allah prays, to who does he pray? I mean, when I pray, I pray to God. As a Christian, I pray to God in the name of Jesus Christ to forgive my sins, for example. But when Allah prays, to who does he pray? Muslims, can you please answer this question? Allah wal malaika yusalluna ala nabi. When Allah does yusalli, when he is praying, to, he does, to who does he pray, guys? Muslims, can you please answer this question? Anyway, let me continue. For your blessing will be submitted to me. They, the companions asked, Messenger of Allah, how can our blessings be submitted to you when your body has decayed? So <laughs> the Muslims are confused. They are asking Muhammad, how can you receive our salat 
Uh, you know, blessing is false translation. How can you receive our prayers? And how is Allah going to pray on you when your body has decayed? So when your body becomes dust, rotting. Look what Muhammad is saying as answer, as response. He, the, the Prophet says, Allah has prohibited the earth from consuming the bodies of the Prophet. Now is this true guys, what Muhammad is claiming here? Is it true that the bodies of Prophets do not decay, do not rot, don't become dust, you know? From dust you are made, you are made to dust you return. So Muhammad is saying that his body does, did not decay and will not decay in the future when he dies. Guys, this is a false claim by Muhammad. Muhammad is lying. And we are going to prove to you that Muhammad is nothing but a liar and a deceiver. Stop calling me. Don't call me. I will block you. Last warning. Guys, whoever you are, don't call me. Okay? Call me when I'm finished teaching. So if we go, if we go to a hadith, here you can read. Read with me guys. Al-Abbas, the paternal uncle of Prophet Muhammad, entered Muhammad's room. Faris, last time. Don't call me. Call me when I'm finished. Teaching, okay? Last warning. Al-Abbas, the paternal uncle of Prophet Muhammad, entered Muhammad's room three after his death, before his burial. As his body remained there for three days, as the Prophet were too busy to bury him. Guy keeps calling me. You know? You know what? I'll block you. Since you are too retarded to understand, I'm, I'm going to block you. Okay? Faris, don't be a retard. Stop calling me for now. So, let me continue. As well of them were engaged in debates of Al-Taqifa Council of choosing a ruler caliph of Yathrib, which is Medina, to succeed him. So, people were busy to choose a ruler after the death of Muhammad. So, Muhammad was lying there for three days dead. Once Al-Abbas, his uncle, entered the room, he put his hand at once on his nose because he smelled a really bad smell and said to the gathered men outside, bury your friend Muhammad fast for his body began decomposition just like the rest of human beings. So as you see, Muhammad, his body actually was degaded. And here Muhammad was busted by his own uncle. You see that guys? His own uncle busted his lies. Because remember Muhammad in the hadith, and this is Sahih hadith, Allah has prohibited the earth from consuming the bodies of the prophets. But here we see that the body of Muhammad started to decompose, started to decay. So here his own uncle busted him and we can again conclude that Muhammad was nothing but a liar. If we go to the Bible guys, if we go to the Bible, the Bible also contradicts Muhammad and show you that Muhammad is nothing but a liar and a deceiver. This is Yoshua 24 verse 32 from the King James Version. And read with me. And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt. So here you see that only the bones of Joseph remained. So his body did actually decay. And we know that Joseph was a prophet. And they buried the bones in Shechem, a parcel of ground which Jacob brought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, sorry if I'm butchering the name guys, sorry, for a hundred pieces of silver, and it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. So as you see, even the Holy Bible contradicts the lies of Muhammad. So we have the uncle of Muhammad, who is busting his lies, exposing the lies of Muhammad and we have the Holy Bible who is exposing the lies of Muhammad. Again, we can conclude that Muhammad is a liar and a deceiver.
any Muslim who still believes that Muhammad is a prophet, in front of you is the evidence that Muhammad is a liar and a deceiver. Oh, Lord of mercy, how can you still be a Muslim in 2019 and cannot see all these contradictions proving that Muhammad was a liar and a deceiver? Lord of mercy. And if we go to the hadith, guys, again, this is from Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari. Muhammad saying that you Muslims are the best of people ever raised up for mankind, meaning the best of peoples for the people. A super Marxist prophet, as you see. Muslims are the best people. I think God, we are children of God. Everyone is equal, right? God loves everyone because we are all children of God. But here Muhammad saying that the best people are the Muslims who bring people who are not Muslims with chains on their necks till they pray, till they embrace Islam. Is this a prophet of God, guys? Is this a message of peace? Is this the loving, peaceful, best example of mankind? Teaching that you are only the best peoples if you bring unbelievers with chains on their necks till they embrace Islam. You see, the religion of Islam must be forced on everyone, on whole mankind. What a pitiful, fake, disgusting prophet. Super Marxist prophet. This sounds or rings a bell, guys. I think the Nazis used to have such disgusting behaviors, right? And we know that the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem was a buddy of Hitler, right? Just Google it. The Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, he was good friends with Muhammad and he taught, uh, sorry, with Hitler, and he taught Hitler all kind of nasty stuff. And we know that Omar forced Christians to wear belts around their waist, like the Nazis did force the yellow star on the Jews. And we know also when the civil war started in Iraq and Syria a couple of years ago, when ISIS came, the neighbors of Christians, guys, I kid you not, the neighbors of Christians who are Muslims, who ate with the Christians as neighbors and drink with Christians for 40 years at least, they started to paint the letter N, the noon, you know. People often ask me, why do you have the, the symbol, this symbol that you see on my screen everywhere? Why do you have it? Why do you use it? Well, I use it as remembrance for the people who suffered in Iraq and Syria, where the Muslims, their own neighbors, who started to paint the letter Noon, the letter N in the Arabic, on the Christian houses and shops to show the ISIS like the Nazis did, the ISIS that he are Christians. These are the houses and properties of Christians. So who do you think the Nazis learned from? From Muslims. Right? Hitler learned from the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. Just Google it, guys. Ask Prophet Google, peace be upon him, and he will provide you some nice pictures. <laughs> and I went to this website, islamqna.info, and this is a Salafi, official Salafi website it's called Islam Question and Answer, islamqna.info, where Sheikh Muhammad Saleh al munajjid is issuing fatwas and answering questions of Muslims. And this is issue or basically fatwa number 94,840, as you see. And here uh, a Muslim is asking, I often hear Christian missionaries criticizing Islam and accusing it because Islam permitted slavery and saying that this is a transgression against man's freedom and rights. 
how can we respond to, to these people? So this Abdul, this Muslim is asking, how can we uh, answer these Christians, Christians like Rob Christian or Christian Prince or David Wood or Sam Shimon? How can we deal with them? And look what this Sheikh is answering. This is Sheikh Salah, Sheikh, sorry, Sheikh Muhammad Salah Al Munajid. And this guy says, Alhamdulillah. And now he's going to answer. And look what his answer will be. So his answer is, this is one of the basic principles of Islam. What is that? Slavery. When the question is asked, why does Islam permit slavery? We reply <laughs> empathetically and without shame. So this Sheikh is saying without shame, we are not ashamed that slavery is permitted in Islam. Slavery is okay in Islam. What a disgusting, filthy cult. A cult of slavery? But we should examine the matter with fairness and with the aim of seeking the truth. So yeah, keep having slaves, Muslims. We know in many, still in many Islamic countries, just go to any Islamic country where you have Sharia, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, all these countries, they have slaves actually. They beat their slaves. They take away their passports, their documents, their travel documents from them. So they cannot escape. And if they don't work very hard, many hours, serving those rich Muslims, they beat them. Just go on YouTube. See how they are beating them. Binding their hands and feet with ropes, beating the hell out of them. Sorry to use that word. Poor people beating their slaves, owning slaves, taking away their travel documents from them. What a nasty, disgusting religion. And of course, they are not ashamed of it, as you see in front of you. I hope you can see it better now. So, yes, this is a disgusting religion. We showed you today that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet who kept contradicting himself. We showed you that Muhammad was a bad copy machine stealing stories from apocrypha Christian writings that are not divinely inspired. So what does those stories do what about the story of solomon what is flying carpet what does it do in the quran what about the seven sleepers in chapter 18 in the quran the seven christian sleepers who were persecuted by muhammad uh, sorry by the romans excuse me there sorry for that mistake so they were getting persecuted by romans and they went and hide in the cave and the quran in chapter 18 is saying that they went inside the cave and a dog was guarding the cave so the dog was not in the original story that was written in the year 250 because the seven sleepers story was written in the year 250 right it's not a divine inspired story what does it do in the quran and how did the guardian angel, because the original story is talking about a guardian angel guarding the entrance of the cave where the seven sleepers were sleeping. How did it become a dog in the Quran? So Muhammad took that story, copied it, and he pasted it and gave it his own twist. He changed the original story, right? And he doesn't even know if it's five, six, or seven, seven, Christian sleeper stories, you know? It may be five, it may be six, it may be seven, who knows? Allah knows best, right, Muslims? And how did the guardian angel became a dog? Because the, the original was Kali Ahom. And when they corrupted the Quran, you know, the Quran of Allah is corrupted. When they started to put dots and vowels in the text, in the late 9th century, the beginning of the 10th century, when the Quran 
was corrupted by Muslim hands, instead of putting the dot and the vowels in the right place, they made instead of Kaliahum, guardian, Kaliah means, means guardian, it became Kalbahum, their dog. You see guys how the Quran got corrupted? This is a small example. As you see, legion stories or legend stories from the Christians, from the Jews, flying carpet of Solomon, the ring of Solomon that can control jinn, all buried by Muhammad from legend stories, from apocrypha stories, made and sound like it's the divine inspiration from Allah. Muslims, you need to think, the proof is in front of you. You need to carefully study and see for yourself that Muhammad created Islam, fabricated the Quran and stole stories from here and there to attack the very person of Jesus Christ, glory to his name. Leave Islam and come back to Jesus, folks. Come back to home, come back home. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because he is the only one who can save you. You accept his grace, you can join us in our heaven, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Muhammad cannot do anything for you. His body decayed and he doesn't even know if Allah will save him. Even Abu Bakr said, even with one foot in Jannah, I still fear the deception of Allah. You see, the deception of, of Allah is very great. Even the guy who was promised heaven, Abu Bakr was one of the first ten. He still fears that Allah will take him out of Jannah and throw him back in hellfire. Muslims wake up. We know that Allah is Khairul Makirin. He is the best of deceivers. You can't use taqiyya on me and I'm, I'm an Arabic speaker. Makir means deception. Allah is the biggest deceiver. Come back home to Jesus, folks. Guys, thank you for listening to my teaching. If you uh, have any questions in the text or you want to call me, please feel free to do so. I will try to do my best to answer your questions. So start asking the questions in the live chat and I will try to answer them for you. If there are any questions, fire away folks. Do we have any Abdul who uh, think has the knowledge or the courage to uh, call me? My Skype is the Rob Christian. If you think you can refute me, please do so. Call me. Uh, guys, this Faris, this Faris in the text, he's saying that may Allah curse me and he's uh, cursing my uh, my mother. He's uh, talking about the private part of my mother. Uh, I love you too, Ferris. I will pray to Jesus to you to be saved. And I forgive you because Jesus said, if you want to be forgiven, you need to start forgiving first. So I forgive you for your insults towards my mother. Shame on you. Shame on you. We know you are a follower of this filthy fake disgusting prophet who said if you are proud about the jahiliya go by the penis of your fathers so i know that you are learning from your fake prophet yes marcus tembeck there are uh, hadith where it says that abu Bakr is ordering his sahaba to uh, collect the quran and that quranic mushaf was given to Hafza and she kept it under her pillow. And then later Uthman asked Zayd ibn Thabit to write a perfect copy. So he took the Hafza 
the, the manuscript that was given to Hafza and he rewrote it, I kid you not, he rewrote it and made a perfect copy. So how can you make something that is perfect as they claim that it's the Quran? How can you rewrite it and make it perfect again? That doesn't make sense. And we know that Uthman had a nice Quranic barbecue. He placed all the Qurans on a pile and he burned all of them. He burned six Ahruf, six ways of recitation and he kept one. And we know according to Islamic sources, Muhammad was given the seven ways of reciting the Quran. So why should you and what authority does Uthman have? Did Allah give the authority to Uthman to burn six out of the seven Ahruf? No, he was not a prophet. No one gave him the authority. And we know later Muslims killed Uthman when he was praying and they buried him between Jews. I kid you not. The same guy who ordered the Quran to be compiled as a perfect copy. They killed him while he was praying. Imagine when he was praying, he was getting butchered. Let's see if I can. Sorry, guys, uh, you are asking a lot of questions, but I really try to be humble and answer your questions. Uh, Draw Angels, Christian Prince is another person. He's a really dear friend of mine. Uh, he, you can go and check out his live shows. He's almost live every day. And this is my second live show. I really hope that you guys in, are enjoying yourselves here and enjoyed my teaching. Use it, take notes guys. Please also when I'm finished, uh, make sure to download this video, translate it in your language so Muslims can see the disasters and the contradictions of this fake prophet. You are free to download my videos guys and please use this teaching to expose Islam and use it in your debates. Use these topics that we mentioned earlier and we showed you the sources and maybe the admins can give those links in the chat. Uh, oh my God girl says, Rob Christian on a scale of one to 10, being the lowest, how stupid is Islam? <laughs> I, say, I say minus thousand. Well, to be honest with you, OMG girl, uh, I don't think you are the brightest person in 2019 if you are still a Muslim. No normal human person should follow Islam in 2019. I mean, everywhere, everything is online. You can see all the sources that we mentioned. You can go and look for yourself as a Muslim and see that Islam is nothing but a fake satanic cult. So are you, you are correct, sister. Thank you, Last Puppet. Thank you for congratulating me for my live show. Thank you. God bless you. Let's see if I can take another... Uh, question. Uh, BJS07 is asking, was Waraka translating the Bible? Well, actually, yes, Waraka ibn Novel, the cousin of uh, Khadija, was translating the New Testament from the Aramaic into the Arabic. So Muhammad could get sources from the New Testament and misuse them for his own agenda, for his own satanic agenda. So yes, Muhammad had access to the Aramaic Injil that was being translated by Waraka ibn Nufil, the cousin of Muhammad. And we know when Waraka died, Muhammad became very sad. We know why, right guys? We know why Muhammad became sad because there was no Waraka ibn Nufil anymore who could give him translations of many legend stories from the Jews, from the Christians, legend stories, uh, stories from the Holy Bible, so he can adopt them into Islam. So Muhammad became sad, and we actually believe after careful study, after very careful study, that Waraka ibn Nufil was the actual father of Muhammad, right? 
we know that Muhammad was raised as an orphan, right? That's what Muslims claim. But we actually believe that Waraq ibn Nawfal was the real father of Muhammad. And Muhammad, according to Sahih al-Bukhari, he went on the high mountains, on the cliff, and he wanted to jump a couple of times. He became very suicidal, and every time he wanted to jump, the demon Jibreel came to his aid to tell him, no, 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 don't do it. Don't do it, Muhammad. Don't throw yourself away from the mountains. So let's see if there are more questions. Keep them coming, guys. Uh, Karen, Karen, Karen Ann says, Allah gives free will to people, or is it destiny? Karen Ann, there is nothing called free will in Islam. The only person or the only creature in Islam who had free will was Satan. Because if we go to chapter, let me show you, Quran.com, chapter 2, ayah 34, I'm going to show you that only Satan had free will in Islam. Adam had no free will because before his creation, 40 years, according to the hadith, 40 years before his creation, Allah made him sin. So actually Muhammad believed in the original sin because Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, right? And Allah, and, and according to Muhammad, Allah is the one who made Adam sin. So there is a conversation between Moses and Adam. Moses blaming Adam, according to Muhammad, for uh, his offsprings to uh, be thrown out of Jannah. So, and Adam is rebuking Moses, the Islamic Moses. Adam is rebuking him, saying to him, it's not my fault, Allah made me do it. So as you, as you just noticed, Adam had no free will. But in Christianity, humans do have free will. Even angels have free will. But in Islam, Satan, let me show you from this Quranic ayah, guys, read with me. And mention when we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam. So as you see, the angels do not have free will in Islam. So Allah is commanding the angels in Islam to prostrate before Adam. So Allah is asking them to commit shirk. And we know that shirk is unforgivable sin in Islam. So why would Allah ask the angels to commit the unforgivable sin of shirk in Islam? So here the angels prostrated, except for Iblis. So here Satan is refusing because Satan is not an angel, remember. So he did not feel addressed, as you see in front of you. So Satan did not bow down, he did not do sujood, because it's here it says fasajadu. That means they are bowing down as an act of worship. I kid you not. So the angels are committing sin. Right? So here only Satan has a free will. Let me answer the call of Kid Faris. Faris, I have debated you before. Can you call me again, Faris? Call me back again. I was too late to answer. Call me again. I debated Ferris on Potok before and I really gave him a nice spanking, but he doesn't learn. And I know he uh, debated Christian Prince many times. Ferris, call me back, Ferris. Call me back. Anyway, let's see if this guy was going to call back. Why are you not calling back, man? Call back. Yeah, I know CP made him cry. I know I've made him cry on Paul Talks too. Yeah, Ferris is a kid. I know, man. He has no clue about Islam. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Um, 
let's see if I can answer another question since Ferris is not calling me back uh, seems that a lot of people are trying to address Ferris's uh, stupid claims Ferris you cursed my mother you filthy scumbag like a prophet but I still are here to debate you if you li like to debate me call me call me call me Ferris you filthy scumbag like your prophet cursing me eh? you know Muhammad guys every morning when he was awake he was asking Allah he was praying and look how the prayers of Muhammad are guys and according to the hadith every morning when he woke he asked Allah in his prayers to curse such and such so Muhammad his prayer every morning was cursing people this is a prophet of, of God guys Prophet of God cursing people? What a shame. And you call him a, uh, a prophet, guys? Muslims, wake up, man. Ferris, call me, call me. You filthy scumbag, you son of Satan, cursing my mother. What have my mother done to you, man? Hi, Renee, nice to see you. Really nice to uh, have you in the live chat. God bless you, sister. Guys, Renee is a dear sister of mine who used to come on Paul Talk when I used to be on Paul Talk. God bless you. God bless uh, Lydia and Ello too. Really nice people that are really great friends uh, on Paul Talk. God bless everyone who joined in. God bless you and your family. Please guys support and subscribe and smash the like button. Okay, I think he's calling again. CP Silencer. Is that you first? Let's see. Let's see if it's, this is going to work. I have a very slow PC, so bear with me. Hello? Hello? Hello, can yes. you hear me? Hello. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. What's, yes, what do you want to say? Ready. What do you want to say, my friend? I just say you're alive. Uh, okay. Uh, know that you're a liar. You lying I, to I'm lying. So. Really? Yeah, I just have you taken down your video last uh, two weeks ago, yeah. saying that Allah did say, "Wa makaru wa makar Allahu." Oh, you, why are you wait, wait, wait? Are you are you ultimate truth? Yes, I know you. you, are, you yeah, I'm running for. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. I'm not running, Abdul. Didn't you the one who made a video and then mass flag my response video with your friends, and you took took it down because you are a filthy scumbag coward like your prophet? I took a video down. Never. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 You and your boyfriends <laughs> took my video down, but that's not a, that's not a problem. As you see, we we make almost every week. I made three four videos, so it's not it's not a problem. Did did he just hang up, guys? Why did he hang up? You're a coward. Why did you hang up? He just hang up, guys. It's the same ultimate truth that I spanked in my response video and he and his boyfriends took that video down by mass flagging it. What a coward you are that you need to feel, have to feel to take down videos because we spank you. I really spanked this Abdul, right? What a shame that he hang up. Right? Because I exposed him, he hang up. You know? He and his boyfriends actually did took down my video, but uh, you can still find the video on my bitch shoot account, guys. Okay, I think he's calling me back. Let me try to answer. Oh, this is oh, it's Ferris the kid. Okay, it's Ferris. Hello, Ferris. Can you hear me, Ferris? Hello, Ferris. Can you hear me? Ferris, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, hello. Ferris, can you hear me? Let me try to call him back.
closer, man. Finally, finally, finally. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, hi, yes. Hi, Ferris. Why did you curse my mother, man? Why did you, why did you call my mother names? In a text. Why did you curse my mother? Why did you use filthy language like your prophet? Why? Did, did you finish? Yeah. Answer my question, please. Why did yes. you curse my mother? Once you just be... Uh, see, simple, simple, just challenge. Be no, 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 no. Okay, listen. I want you, I want to tell, I want you to tell everyone in the live chat, why did you curse my mother and call her names? Why did you use so filthy as language? You, as soon as you finish. And I, I am finished. Okay, good. Just be, be quiet for three minutes. If you speak, you are a donkey. Don't speak. Meanwhile, no, do, for the listen, minutes. listen. The certified yeah, yeah, donkey yeah. is you, is you no, and your you prophet. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, you are your mother. Don't speak about the prophets. I am bad to the bad people. So okay, I am very okay, bad people. okay. Tell me, tell me your refutation, donkey. Tell me your refutation. Yeah, but just, just, just stop. You see, if you want, this is my way. It's always been like this. If you, if you curse you, my mother again, I will hang on you and I will okay. ban you. Okay. Okay, no problem. But just be, just be quiet for three minutes. Okay, but do don't that? use the filthy language of your prophet. Okay. No, I'm not the one who's starting that. You Christian always do that. We yeah. are not doing. That. But didn't your prophet say, if you're proud about the jailia, go bite on the penis of your father? Did he say that or no, not? Thing. You see, wait, wait for your turn and be quiet. You, are, you right now, you're just making some uh, accuses to me. Uh, 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 I will answer it. I will uh, answer it. Yeah. Just be quiet, like your like your brother CP. Why okay. did you call me? Why did you call me, Abdul? Why did you call me? As soon as you be quiet, you see, Christian, you cannot be quiet. I know that. Just a radio, twenty-four hours speaking. Be quiet. Go ahead, <laughs> talk. Why did you call yeah. me? Okay. <laughs> see, it's the same thing. Be quiet for three minutes. If you speak, I will reset my time. Simple as that. I am waiting, <laughs> man. Okay. Stop looking Just for excuses. I'm waiting. Okay. Mute your mouth, please. Just mute it. Mute it. You see? Abdul, okay, don't tell I'll... me what to do. I will spank you, huh? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Talk, no talk, because... talk. Please, I want to be spanked. Please. Okay, please. talk, talk, talk. Okay. What do you want to say? Speak. Yeah, so far, one, two minutes just gone. We are just like this, going forward, forward Not and backward. Just, speak. just stop speaking. Your first, like you said, why I said something about your mother. Right now in the call, I said because it was a response. But in the chat, someone like said something about the prophet. I respond to that guy, not to your mother. You, I didn't like. Well, you are not allowed. You are not allowed to use filthy language against my guest. So shame on you for see? cursing my guest. Shame on you. You see, if, if you if, listen, if you curse my ahead, my guest, yeah. if if you if you yeah. curse my listen, if you curse my guest, that means you are cursing me. Okay? So basically it's the same. As I said, you Christian cannot be quiet for three minutes. It's a very simple, simple challenge for Christians. Like I said to you, if you curse my guest, you are cursing me, okay? So, so, so be be at least, have some shame. Don't use filthy language, you're a prophet. If your brother Christian having shame, I will do that. But as soon on the chat, almost 24 hours, Speaking about the prophet, about listen, the prophet. Abdul, Abdul, listen. There's nothing wrong with exposing your filthy, fake prophet. So what's the problem? Why, why, why do you need to curse people? Why do you need to curse people who are showing you facts about your fake prophet? Yeah, as soon as you be quiet, you see, uh, for, for the response for the first question, you interrupt. See how, like, you see, you, you. No, I, I'm not interrupting. I'm addressing. I know you do not understand. Like I said, just be quiet for three minutes or okay, two minutes. Simple as that. Two minutes, but Christian cannot go do ahead, that. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, appreciate it. It's simple. My 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 way is very simple, but you Christian cannot do that. I do, don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. Talk. I'm wasting. I will talk when I want. The thing the thing is, you accuse the third. Uh, you're accused. Like I said something to your mother. I didn't say in the chat in the loving chat typing. I did not say to your mother. Because someone over there, one of the like... For, Listen, for, if you curse someone's mother in the chat, that means you're cursing my mother because he's a, my brother in Christ. Again, interruption. Yeah. See? See, simple. Very simple. Very simple. You can, Christian cannot be just you know, speaking. Are you going to uh, tell me why you call me or not? Don't waste my time. Last warning. Don't waste my time. 
Talk what you if you have, if you have say something to say, say it. I have to say, but don't interrupt and don't speak. Simple. But you cannot. Waiting. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, appreciate it. Just, just don't interrupt. This is my simple, simple, really. Two minutes. Again, like I said, if you uh, interrupt, I will restart my time. Simple. You see, uh, how can you say it, really? About this, about this one. About You said, like, to your mother, like I said it for the fourth time. I did not say anything to your mother specifically because the one of the your follower, or I don't know who he is, he said something about the prophet. I respond to him. You see, it it it. I will, I will I be honest. It hurts me when you guys saying to my my prophet. Well, your your prophet your prophet is a fake prophet, so I know you. It hurts. It's okay, man. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. See you interruption. See, this is the first time you're striking yourself. You know, without knowing. You are Abdul, guy. Abdul, stop crying. Why did Bubble you call me? Why did you call me? Bubble believer, stop speaking. It's my time. Two you, minutes. you are my guest. You called me. I can talk <laughs> if I'm if I'm seeing you crying. I will uh, I, I will talk and I will tell you why did you call me? Well, people, stop being a stop being a woman, man. Are you are you a woman? You can show see my private part is the Be a man. Uh, Be a man. Talk. I'm waiting. You see, the man is will not interrupt. There is, you see, will not adab adab fil munadara or fil muhadha. Like in the kala tafqa, wala ta'arfu shayin an adabiha. Abdul, la tatkilam bil Arabi. People are people are speaking English. Don't don't need to talk Arabic. Khalik bil Englishi. Khalik bil Englishi. Bil Englishi or bil Arabi. I am saying to you. Listen and hear. Wala tafqa shayin fil Arabi. Talk English. Talk English. Talk English. My 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 guests are English speakers. Talking English. Just, I will speak. You see, so far going forward, you because you interrupt. This is the tenth time you interrupting. I just want to say something in two minutes. Don't okay, but, but don't I, repeat yourself five times. No need. We already got the message. Abdul. This is one of my condition. If you interrupt, I will restart my time and I will speak it again. So it will the people will understand what I'm trying to say. Abdul, you're wasting time. You're wasting precious time because I want to answer other people's question in the text. I don't have all day. Okay. Last warning. Are you going to tell what you why you call me? Tell me why you call me. You see, there is one guy and someone is calling himself Christian Prince Indonesian. He said, please. He was begging to me because I spank him in the Skype. Yeah, yeah. You, see, you Muslims always spank Christians. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, always, all yeah, yeah, always, it's, yeah. it's, it's my uh, easiest way, really, no problem. Yeah, you spank, you spank, you, you spank us in your dreams, man. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay no problem. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You, okay, you guys, okay. Why did you call me, Abdul? Abdul, why did you call me? Uh, a bubble believer, just stop speaking for two minutes. This is my simple way, but you just, it. I know it. Abdul, inside, you know what? You know what? You know, guys, guys, I gave him enough chances to tell me why he called me. He, came, he called me to uh, to ex uh, make excuses, cry like a little baby. I don't have time for that. Either you're going to call and be a man or don't call me. Okay. Let's see if I can answer other people's questions. Guys. And this guy, uh, you know, he came to waste my time, basically. Any Muslim who has the knowledge and the courage to call me, or maybe you can ask me a question in the text, uh, my fellow Brothers and sisters in Christ, go ahead, please. Maybe you have a question about today's topics. Because clearly, Faris only called to uh, cry like a kid. Cursing other people's uh, mothers and cry about it. What a shame. Yeah, I know Aram Fer, he's, he's, you know, he's a kid. It's okay. You know, let us not feed the trolls. Any any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Is there any Muslim? Guys, before I went live, before I went live, I uh, had a debate with a Muslim on Discord. And after, after I spanked him in the debate, uh, someone told me that he was 16 years old. So, you know, I didn't know that. And uh, so this is why I don't want to upload that debate. I really spanked him hard. And I'm not 
proud about spanking Muslims, to be honest with you. When we debate Muslims, we don't do that for our, our own self. We do that for the truth. We, we don't have any uh, joy in spanking Muslims. We are spanking Muslims for other Muslims to see that Muslims can't answer our questions. Right? And no Muslim can answer simple questions. So uh, now our uh, friend Ultimate Truth is calling. Okay, let me answer the call. Hey, Ultimate Truth. Can you hear me, Ultimate Truth? Oh, yeah. Uh, why did you change your name to CP Silencer, man? Because I'm a silencer. That was for CP. I got no, you are, no, you're a joke. You're a joke, to be honest because, with you. Because you, because, because you blocked me from the other one. And you yeah. blocked me on your chat because you're a coward. I'm, so I, I did not block. A, I did not block you. I did not. Abdul, I <laughs> was tired of your silly videos, and I don't respond to kids. When you took down my video, when you took down my video, you and your boyfriends mass flagged my video. That was a sign for me to not accept any ca any calls from kids. But since you are calling, go ahead. What do you want to say, Abdul? Okay, I want I, I want to talk about Jesus Christ. You ready for it? You want to talk? You want to talk about Isa or Jesus Christ? I want to talk about, about your Jesus Christ, which is not my Isa. We know your Isa is fake because the real name of yes. Jesus is Yeshua Al Messiah. So who is Isa Abdul? Your Isa, the son of Miriam, is the no, cousin no, of Aaron no, and I'm Moses, right? He's the son of uh, he's the son of Miriam and the cousin of Aaron and Moses, right? Do you agree? Uh, oh, did you see Aaron in there? Why are you lying? Ah, did, did you see? Uh, well, it says see, uh, it says in the Quran this the sister of Aaron, right? The sister of Aaron. Uh, 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 Who is the sister of Aaron? The Quran says that. Quran. Yes, it says in the Quran. No, no, but who said it in the Quran? The people that the, who said it? Did Allah say it? Well, uh, since Allah did not rebuke them, said, did Allah, if if it's not did Allah, Allah saying Allah, that, did Allah did Allah rebuke them? Yes or no? Allah coded, Allah coded people like you who are liars, who said all oh, sisters of Aaron. Allah coded people like the same way Allah coded those who said to 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 uh, Prophet Muhammad that that he's crazy. Allah coded. Well, your prophet was crazy. Jesus. He was called Allah majnun. People. Your prophet was majnun, wasn't I'm he? I'm just saying. No, I, I ask you a specific question. Who said that Mary was the sister of Aaron in the Quran? Chapter 19, 28. Chapter 19, 28. The hypocrites, they said. It Is says, O sister of Aaron, thy father who is not... Huh? No, no, no. Who said that? This is the Quran. This is the speech of Allah. Is the Quran the speech of Allah? Yes or no? Don't cut the verse. Start the verse from the beginning. It says, O sister of Aaron, it says, O sister of Aaron, thy father was not a wicked man, nor was the mother of a harlot. Nor was thy mother a, a, a harlot. So who, listen, listen, who, who is speaking in the Quran? Last time, last time, listen, listen. According to you Muslims, the Quran is the speech of Allah. Are you telling me now people are speaking instead of Allah in the Quran? Listen, why are you lying? Allah is calling I'm not lying, I'm not lying. Can, can, can you listen though? Let me tell you, since, since you don't, since you, I ask you who said that, right? Go ahead, Abdul, don't waste right? my time. Go ahead, okay. don't waste my time. Now, people who hated Mary, the people who did not like Mary, are the ones that said, oh, sister of Aaron, why did you do this? It's not Allah talking, right? Allah is quoting people. They said, they, that's not Allah. They say, oh, sister of Aaron. Now, this is not Allah talking. Allah is quoting people. The same people or the same kind of people did say Okay, to, did, to did, did, Allah, did Allah rebuke them? Did Allah it's tell them? No, did Allah, did Allah say, did Allah say, she's this not the rebuke. sister of Aaron and Moses? Uh, uh, did Allah say that Muhammad wasn't a fool? 
when they said that Muhammad was a fool? Forget about Muhammad. Here, here, this this topic. <laughs> did Allah <laughs> listen, Abdul? Don't waste my time. Did Allah? Yes. Did you Allah say, Muhammad. listen? Did Allah say, no, she's not the sister of Aaron? Yes. You fools, she's not the sister of Aaron. Listen. Did Allah say that? I want, to, I want to talk about Jesus. You're going to Mary, and, and, and I'm telling you. We are talking. We are, we are talking about Mary and his and his son, right, in the Quran. And you're lying. And so, you, you so why, why did all, why did your fake prophet made a historical mistake, Moses calling the son, the calling the son of Miriam the cousin of Aaron and Moses? Why? Answer the question, please. I said, why did you put? Who told you that they're talking about the same era? Because it says sister of Aaron, the the father, her father is Amran, bin Amran. If we go to the Bible. It, it, if we go to the Bible, it's the same people. I said, her father, I her I father, said, the sister of Aaron Moses, her father is called Amram, and her and her brothers are called Aaron and Moses. Never seen in the Quran the name of Mary next to the name of Moses. Nowhere. Down there, and it's not Allah saying it. It's Answer the saying. question, Abdul. Abdul, why no did lie. your muff, why did your fake prophet confuse Maryam? The sister of Aaron Moses with Mary, which is a fifteen hundred years historical mistake. Why? Let me uh, echo, uh, listen. I asked you. Uh, you asked me what do I want. I said I want to ask you a question about Jesus. Right? Right? Are you going to answer my questions, or are you going to run away like? No, that? I'm going to answer okay. your question. If you answer my question first, you are my guest. You need to answer my question first. Why did Muhammad? Okay. Why did Muhammad? Okay. Why did Muhammad make a huge mistake and call himself, and you still call him, him a prophet? How can a prophet of God make, make this mistake? I said, listen to me, brother. Did you ask me what do I want? I said, I'm going to ask are you. Going, are you going to answer yes? my question? Yes or no? Yes. Are you going yes. to answer my question? Yes or no? I already answered the question. Abdul, Abdul now, don't waste my time. time. Don't waste my what time. I'm are you going to answer yes or no? Yes. I know you're going to hang up. Hang up. Coward. Coward yes. is you who cannot answer my question. Coward. Why yeah, did your Allah you're, not you're, rebuke you're, those people who are you're, speaking you're, in chapter 19, 28? Sorry, 19 and Ayah 28. You, you know what? You know, Jesus. just go, just go, just go. Abdul, Abdul, just go, just go, just go. Go make more videos just, about me and lie just, about me. Go, 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 go. Yeah, just, just. Wasting my time. What is what is with these Muslims? Calling me and wasting my time cannot answer single questions. I don't have time for these kids, man. This is why, guys, I don't answer his calls. Because he's a coward. He can't even answer one simple question. The Prophet of Islam actually did think that Maryam was the sister of Aaron and Moses. Which is a 1500 years mistake. Right? If we go to the Bible, we can see that. Stupid Abduls. Keep following the liar, fake prophet Muhammad. Let's see if there are any, any more questions in the text, guys. Please ask me your questions in the text. Any questions? Please subscribe and like the video, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and click on the bell icon to get notification when I go live or upload my videos. Any questions? Let's see if I can find one. You know, these kids today, man. Guys, you know, you know, these people, ultimate truth, fairest kid, they can't answer single questions. One of them called me to cry about the chat. He had nothing else to, to say to me. And the other guy, he calls me to ask questions about 
Jesus Christ. Okay, it's okay. I can answer your questions. But since you cannot answer even one question of mine, since you brought the topic up of Jesus, right? And you, and you are even calling your even your own Allah and Prophet liars. I mean, the, the proof is in front of you. Why didn't Allah refute the people who called, called her the sister of Aaron, the sister of Moses? And since when is the Quran the speech of people? Don't you always, Muslims say that the Quran is the speech of Allah? Hmm? Now the people speak in the Quran, the jinn speak in the Quran. And who is the one who is speaking in chapter 1? Who is that? Who is saying? Who is talking here in chapter 1? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Who is saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? Is it Allah? Is it Muhammad? Who is it? Who is the one talking here? Huh? Who is the one talking in chapter 1? Since you Muslims say the Quran is the chapter, sorry, the, the, the speech of Allah. Who is saying all praise to Allah? The lords of the worlds. Is Allah praying to himself? Is Muhammad here the one praying to, to Allah? Is this Muslims who say all praise to Allah? Who is the, the one talking here? It's you who we worship. Who is the one worshipping? Is Allah worshipping himself? Is Allah worshipping Allah? Is Allah worshipping a different God? This is clearly not the speech of Allah. So who is the one talking here? Allah knows best. Allahu Alam who is talking here. Allahu Alam. Allahu Alam. Right? Allahu Alam who is talking in the Quran. Guide us. Allah is asking for guidance, guys. Is Allah asking for guidance? Since the Quran is the speech of Allah, who is asking for guidance? Guide us to the straight path. Is Allah asking Allah to be guided? Allah needs guidance? Allah needs guidance? Oh, Lord have mercy. The God of Islam needs guidance. And when we make videos and we spank them, like this ultimate truth guy, you know, he needs to rename himself. He can't even call with his real name. What a shame. He uh, can't even answer a question. And he's lying about his Quran, as you saw, saw and heard. They can't even answer simple questions, man. What a shame. What a shame. Lord of mercy. Let's see if we can answer people's questions, guys. Uh, there are no Muslims who can call me where, who have knowledge. They can't even answer simple questions, so let us try to answer your questions guys is there any abdul if there's no other abdul we will try to answer someone else their questions in the text in the chat you see guys when you are following a fake prophet like muhammad you don't have the truth you can't answer simple questions but when we Christians accept the truth, who is Jesus Christ himself, who says, I am the truth, I am the way and life, we have the truth, we have the answers from the Bible. We don't need secondary sources like the Hadith or Tafsir, right? We can read the Bible as it is, and we can get the answers from there. Of course, there are commentaries to help us out. But you can get the answer from the Bible if you study the Bible carefully. Any Muslim? Any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call me? 
Yeah, Suleiman's ring, the ring of Suleiman, guys, is basically a uh, similar story to Lord of the Rings. You know, a ring that can control them all. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. So Suleiman had a ring, and Satan stole that ring, and he could control everyone in the kingdom of Solomon. So people didn't know it was Satan. They thought it was Suleiman. And Satan was having sexual intercourse with the wife of Solomon. And he was controlling the jinn instead of Solomon. So a Lord of the Rings story in the Quran. Yeah, Revelation 22, 13, yes. A rabbi speaking in the Quran. We have jinn speaking in the Quran. We don't know who is the one speaking in chapter 1 of the Quran. Surah Al-Fatiha. You know, Islam is a big mess and the Quran is a messy book. Yeah, and Hamza, guys, Hamza, I think he's the guy that I debated in Discord. Uh, I really spanked him hard, but I didn't know he was 16, else I would have uh, uh, put the video uh, on YouTube. But I'm not seeing the joy in uploading a video of a 16-year-old kid getting spanked by moi. So, you know. We don't do this for fun, guys. We do this for the truth. We do this for the glory of Christ. I know Lucky Dodo, you know. He was cursing people in the text and uh, when you curse my f followers, you are cursing me. Right? What a shame. What a shame that you need to use such filthy, disgusting language. The language of Muhammad and the language of uh, Abu Bakr. You know, Abu Bakr said, go lick the clitoris of uh, one of the three daughters of uh, Allah. And Muhammad said, go bite on the penis of your forefather. This is the language of the f fake prophet. And this is the language of the first caliph of Islam, Abu Bakr. So what do you expect from these people, man? What do you expect? Can you tell us the story about Muhammad's mother? Draw a ranger. Draw ranger is asking the question in the chat. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, if we study the Islamic sources carefully, we can conclude that Amina, the mother of Muhammad, carried Muhammad in her belly for four years. I kid you not. Any normal person knows that that's not possible carrying a child imagine Muhammad is four years old he comes out of the belly of his mother he says hello mom he can speak right I mean a woman carrying a child in her belly for four years Lord of mercy and on top of that Amina died uh, when Muhammad was uh, very young right and he was raised up as an orphan and he was raised by many women and every time uh, he was basically adopted in inside a family that woman that was taking care of him she noticed that there's something wrong with this kid there's something wrong with this child this Muhammad and they didn't want to keep him so Muhammad was basically uh, changing families from here to there because every time, if you go to the Sira and Nabawi, you will see that the women used to say, there's something wrong with this. This kid is not normal. Right? And we know, if we go to the Hadith, we know that Muhammad was possessed by black magic. And we know who the master of black magic is. It's Satan. So Satan was controlling Muhammad for at least six months. And he was called and accused to be a Majnoon, a mad poet. Majnoon means someone who is possessed by jinn. And he was accused of being a thief. Right? Stealing, stealing underwear, stealing legend stories and putting them in the Quran. People were spanking Muhammad, calling him a liar, a thief. And he was called a Majnoon, someone who is possessed by jinn in Arabic. 
And we believe that Amina had sexual intercourse with many women, uh, men, sorry. It was a custom activity. It was a normal activity for pre-Islamic women in Mecca to have orgies around the Kaaba. I don't want to go to very disgusting details, but the women used to uh, put their uh, blood, monthly blood, on the black stones for fertility. You know, disgusting. Man. They say that uh, the black stones absorb the sins of mankind. So.